I, I think that's well said, and that goes back to Antisthenes. You're 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 having conversations all day long, even when you're alone. This fundamental machinery of cognition and agency is largely left to just run of its own accord. Like, we, 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 we think we should be educated on other things, but we think that this is just something we can just do. And, and, and the problem with that, is, in one sense, that's true, we can just do it. But in another sense, that, that blinds us to the fact that we could do it, do it, do it so much better. Do it, do it so much better. Do it, do it, do it, choosing evil, they choose a lesser good in place of a greater good. And if we constantly just default to, well, we'll just sort of chit chat along, right? Um, and that's and then we, that 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 actually shapes our identities and the, the fabric of our of our mind. I do agree that um, Theologos is very much for people who find the traditional religions non-viable. On the other hand, I would say, and this is also true, Theologos often helps return people yes. to a religion and yeah. find a home within it that they were in question about or that was not properly uh, making them feel home. But insofar as you have a religion that homes religio, via logos will also help you. And third thing, it will allow the non-believers and the believers to commune and fellowship with each other, which is sorely needed today as well. Because it's not, it, the Logos isn't out to change what you know or what you believe. It's the how you know and how you believe that it's out to change, right? The fundamental attitude of participation, the dispositional, formal way of relating writ large relating period and um i mean i think of one way of thinking about it when we talk about the voices the conversations that carry on unnoticed inside of us we, we like they're not just conversations they are the forces forces that direct our will and attention yes. and agent, right they're working on us they're directing our movements they're steering us whether we're conscious of being steered by them or not and so one thing that again when it's working properly one thing that dialogo says is that we use the logos within dialogos as the voice to tame our multitudes and yes. to hear them yes. right so that there's a consciousness that that those that the, the multi-vocal nature of ourselves and our personalities can be given something like an orchestral, an orchestral conductor, an orchestral, an orchestral conductor. Yeah, right. The, the interpersonal and the intrapersonal they re reflect and reinforce and disclose and articulate each other when di dialectic into dialogos is 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 happening. Right. Exactly. exactly. So dialogos wants to give you back to yourself, right? It wants to orient you back to yourself and and that's why it can be i i think i think i think we've seen enough to know that it i mean just within our experience you know, yeah. not least the tradition that it's emerging from that um in the way that platonism was so essential to the emergence and the ontology of christianity and the relatedness of its fundamental hypostatic Right, the the, yeah. the, the, the the Trinitarian relatedness that came out of it obviously rests on that tradition, and in the same way that one emerged from the other, I think so too can a renewal of religious participation emerge from the profound experience of being in dialogic practice. It's Look at how the dialectical tradition, the Platonic, Neoplatonic tradition. Neoplatonism, Platonism, Neoplatonism enter into re reciprocal reconstruction with Christianity, like we yeah. just said. But they also do this with Islam and produce Sufism. They do it with Judaism and produce Kabbalah. They do it with Cartesian, the, the, the Cartesian framework in Spinoza and produce Spinoza's, right? And, 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 and they, they, they Neoplatonism can enter it and enter into a reciprocal reconstruction with a scientific revolution. That's what happened at the beginning of the 20th century. Like, but it didn't make everybody say the same thing, but it provided a space in which everybody could talk in a way that was mutually transformative and they could commune even when they could disagree. And that allowed them to trade and build civilizations together. This is, this is again, Right, I, I, that I, I, I'm just, I think I'm, I'm trying to broaden the historical argument that Chris is making. Right, the, 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 what we're trying to get at is, and I mean this with respect, we're trying to get at the space from which religions are born, so that the so people can go back if they need to 
or they can give birth to something that is, you know, trans-religious or post-religious that will do that same thing for them. But also, as I said, afford people to talk to each other again. Like, it's amazing how we're, we're losing, like, given what Guy said, think about how fundamental conversation is, and what we are losing right now is the ability to properly converse with each other. Like, we're talking about, we talk about the environment being degraded, and we should, by the way, but the, the very environment that makes persons possible, metacognitive, self-reflective, self-aware, moral agents possible, that environment is being degraded, not by any one position, but by the lack of the, the, the denuding of the forest of conversation. We can't have an ecology of practices. We can't even have an ecology of, way of be, ways of being without that. We are losing. We are losing conversation at a rapid rate. And this should be our primary concern. If you all you're concerned about is a particular position winning or losing, you are ultimately losing. We're all we are all losing together.